What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. A deal has been made. Well, at least preliminary. There's a lot of problems with it, and there's a question on if it's even going to pass. I'll give you the details on that here. First of all, happy Memorial Day weekend, and I want to thank everybody who has served our country and those who have passed and served our country here as well. Um, also, in honor of my grandfather, here here is a picture of my grandfather who served at Pearl Harbor. He was there at Pearl Harbor actually two days before Pearl Harbor, the attack. And um, he, his boat actually left out of Pearl Harbor two days before. And uh, yeah, so just think if he if his ship wouldn't have left and then um, the attack came. <laughs> my mom might not have happened uh, if he, if you know if he would have perished there and then um, he left out and then of course the attack happened and then um, you know the war happened and you know he was obviously called back in and then you know World War II happened so yeah and the, my brother was also in the army so also I want to thank everybody who was you know has served our country here thank you so much so uh, with that being said, let's jump right in here. Here we go. Okay, so President Biden and Speaker Kevin McCarthy from the Republicans reportedly have agreed to a debt ceiling deal. However, this is just the start of it because there's a lot of problems with this. And I'll tell you what's in the deal here uh, in, a, in a few moments because both sides, the Republican Party and the Democratic Party, apparently hate the deal that Biden and McCarthy had to come to to actually get an, an agreement. Both sides had to come so far to actually meet in the middle. Take a look at this here. Conservative House Republicans knock the debt ceiling deal. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham blasted the defense spending in the debt ceiling as a joke. They had to cut military spending. Uh, McCarthy and the debt deal... Uh, House leader for the Democrats, Hakeem Jeffries, says there's, quote, not one thing in the bill for Democrats. Democrats hate the deal. Pramila Jayapal, leader of the House Progressive Caucus, says Biden should worry that the Progressive Caucus won't support the debt ceiling deal. They hate it. Um, you know, McCarthy's trying to defend it and say, hey, this is what we had to do. Biden's trying to defend it. Uh, Republican Chip Roy blasts the Biden-McCarthy debt ceiling deal as a turd sandwich. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes they say that um, if both sides walk away without everything they want, then it was a good deal. I don't know if this is a good deal, in enough that it might not pass because both parties are so upset that they didn't get anything they wanted, but yet somehow <laughs> Biden and McCarthy think it was enough to meet in the middle. But um, this is how this is how different the parties are in our country today. We are anything but the United States of America. We might as well be called the divided states of America how different we can be as a country to literally see red and blue. You can let me know your thoughts here. But here's what Kevin McCarthy had to say here coming away after this deal was made. We don't even know if it's going to pass. Take a listen here. Because remember, just because Kevin McCarthy and Biden, the basically kind of the leaders of their parties here, have made a deal, that doesn't mean that the actual people in the House and Senate from their parties are going to vote yes on it. Okay? Keep that in mind here. Here we go. Take a listen. Joining us now, Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy. Mr. Speaker, welcome back to Fox News Sunday. Good to have you. Thanks for having me on. Okay, I don't know how much rest you've gotten, but let's <laughs> dive in. Because um, you got a deal, and now you got to sell it to members. So let's talk a little bit more about some of those who are upset. Uh, Congressman Dan Bishop... Chad talked about him. He tweeted this after the call you had with the group last night. Heard the call. Rhinos congratulating McCarthy for getting almost Zippo in exchange for $4 trillion debt ceiling hike was enough to make you. And he used the vomit emoji. Actually, it's so bad they won't give a figure for the debt ceiling hike, only that it's suspended till first quarter of 2025. Our bill was a year less. Your reaction. He's probably a no vote. 
Well, that's okay, because more than 95% of all those in the conference were very excited. But think about this. We finally were able to cut spending. We're the first Congress to vote for cutting spending year over year. So you cut that back. You fully fund the veterans, you fully fund defense, but you take that non-defense spending all the way back lower than 22 levels. Now you get work requirements for TANF and SNAP, where the Democrats said that was a red line. Now you're able to reform NEPA. How frustrating we are with, it's been 40 years since you could streamline it. To build a road in America takes you seven years of review. We now limit that where it's focused, where you can only review it for one to two years. We're going to get America working again. We get the process working again, where we always have these omnibuses at the end of the year. We now penalize Congress if they don't get their jobs done. There is so much in this that's positive, and measure it to all the other debt ceilings. When Republicans had the presidency, the Senate, and the House, did they ever cut spending? No, they increased it. We were able to do this when the president said he wasn't even going to talk to us. This is really a step in the right direction. It puts us a trajectory that's different. We put a statutory cap on only spending 1% for the next six years. So we let government grow, but at a slower rate. So let's go to that point. Um, there's a lot there, but on that issue of spending, the White House is sending around its side. And of course, they're going to take credit, too, and, and want a victory lap. They say this, there are no budget caps after 2025, 20, only non-enforceable appropriations targets. We all know how non-enforceable targets work in Washington. So they say... You might have gotten something for a year or two, but after that, there's nothing to it. No. First of all, watch what the government has done before. They increased it. Okay, but are they, are they not trillion. telling us the truth there? No, you have a statutory cap on there. We've got to be able to stay in the majority. Then we could have a rule to be able to keep it going forward. The, the other thing you have here, too, is for the very first time, you have administrative pay-go. We had a president that spent another $1.5 trillion around Congress. That can no longer happen. Meaning if he That's takes executive statute. actions. I'm sorry, he's, what? Meaning if he takes executive actions, he's got to He's got to cut to be able to go forward. Talk about where he's going to pay for it. He doesn't have to talk about it. He has to do it. That would have saved us $1.5 trillion in the first two years of this presidency. That's a major savings. That has never been in law before, and now it's being put into law. If you look at each movement here, this is a whole new direction. Just think about how this even came to fruition. Normally, you have a 1,000-page bill. This is going to be less than 150 pages. Normally, the country doesn't know about it till after it's passed. No, we'll wait 72 hours. This is worthy of the American people. I want them to read it. I want them to understand it. We only have the majority in one house with a five-seat majority, with a president who said we would never talk about this, who had Chuck Schumer said this would be a clean debt ceiling, we would just raise it. That's not the case. You've got work requirements to help people out of poverty into jobs. You've got reform forms, that we can build things, cut the red tape. We cap the, so the president can't just spend money wildly. We're actually spending less than we spent last year. That hasn't happened in Congress. So maybe it doesn't do everything for everyone, but this is a step in the right direction that no one thought we would be at today. Let's talk about work requirements, because you all have said it was sort of a red line. Um, Congressman Garrett Graves, one of your top uh, negotiators on this, when he was asked Friday if you guys were going to back off on that, he said, quote, hell no. But the White House Again, that's an area where they're celebrating. They say there are no changes to Medicaid. Um, you referenced SNAP and TAN TANF. And so basically, SNAP includes an expansion for veterans and people who, who are homeless. So there's an expansion there to some extent for some credits. But um, that the, and, and the changes that you did get will lift the age and the requirements and those kinds of things, but that they sunset. So they don't last for very long. You can't tie one Congress to the next. No, they don't. They sunset after seven years when you go forward. But let's see what the White House doesn't write in there. There's a 12 percent exemption for every state, and the states are using this to exempt people. We lower that to 8 percent. We take the age from 49 to 54, so it encompasses more people. What did we exempt? Veterans. I think that's appropriate that veterans get exempted. Of course. But what we're talking but about. But those are dollars. But when what you talk about more benefits for more and people. And you know, at the end of the day, it's saves more money, because what does a work requirement do? It's only on able-bodied people with no dependents. Instead of borrowing money from China to pay somebody to sit on the couch, we now give them the process to go get a job. Every study has shown when you do that, it puts more people to work. And when they work, what happens? More people are paying into Social Security and Medicare. You will see at the end of the day, this puts our economy stronger, less dependent on China. We cut money so we stop the inflation the Democrats are doing. This is a tough 
position because the Democrats have spent so much, made it so easier for people to not go back to work, and we just changed the course, shrunk the ability for exemptions on the percentage, and now are going to provide people more jobs. Okay, let's talk about the IRS because there have been talk of trying to scale back some of the $80 billion. Um, Congressman Dan Bishop also tweeting on this. He says, one of the $80 billion Democrats appropriated of the $80 billion appropriated to the IRS over 10 years, the deal rescinds only $1.9 billion. You read that right. That's the kind of get that's so good McCarthy agreed to increase the debt ceiling $4 trillion. Yeah, let's, let's say I have the full explanation. Do you know how much they're going to spend this year for IRS agents? $1.9 billion. So we repealed every single dollar they were going to use for IRS agents. So they hired zero. So I have to come back next year. So I don't get all of it repealed, but they have none for this year. I don't understand if you if you stopped all the hiring of any IRS agents that that is not a win in his eyes. So I'm not quite sure. Do you have I, negotiating I'm room though next to be year? Able to if, put as a, I'm sorry. Do you have negotiating room though next year if this deal is still in place? I mean, what kind of negotiations are the Democrats going to want to engage in? Well, we, we have the majority. We can govern and engage in anything they want to engage in. But what we have found, since we've taken the majority, we changed this country. We opened the House back up. We not only have we repealed the IRS agents they're going to have today, we put in work requirements. We're now spending less money, the first Congress to do that, in a Congress before. We've now capped the president that he can't just go spend $1.5 trillion. We've made fully fund our military and our veterans, but the non-defense level goes back to 22 levels, even below that. Think about that. We don't control the Senate. We don't control the presidency. So compare us to when we controlled all three. We didn't do any of that. We spent more money. It's a new day. It's a new Congress. And it's a new Republican majority. So the Washington Post, writing about this yesterday, um, said this about what's ultimately in the deal. They said the White House agreed to an inflation-adjusted reduction in direct spending on discretionary programs, but one that will be mitigated by redirecting funds from other areas, such as the money clawed back from Internal Revenue Service expansion. Spending on these programs will rise by 1 percent in 2025 under the deal. There's a question about whether a lot of this is just a wash, if they're just moving money from one place to another. Let's think about this. The president increases by $6 trillion. We have always said we're going to call back money, and then we're going to let Congress let government only grow at 1 percent. Why? Because it's been growing at 33 percent with the Democrats on discretionary spending. The president said we could only look at about 14 percent of the entire budget to get this done. We've been able to achieve that in this short time frame. But think about what else we repealed. This is the largest rescission in American history. You can add up all the rescissions from all the other Congress. This is greater. And what are we pulling back? CDC's Global Health Fund. So no longer are we sending $400 million of American taxpayers' money to China. We continue to pull that back. That is a victory for the American public. And I'll debate this bill with anybody, because at the end of the day, is it everything I wanted? No. But we don't control all of it. But it is the biggest rescission in history. It is the biggest cut in Congress has ever voted in that process. And you know what? We've been able to do it by making the economy even stronger, by putting work requirements in to put people back to work, and then streamline NEPA that hasn't been done in 40 years. We're going to cut the red tape. So if you want to build a road, if you want to put renewable energy, you want to have our energy become energy independent, you now have it streamlined and an opportunity with a time frame for review instead of seven years to one. I want to ask you about student debt relief because I'm hearing two different stories from not what what is in here and what's not. So you all have said that the pause on student debt repayments is going to lift. Is that my understanding? That, so that they'll come back. But the White House says this, the budget agreement keeps in place the president's plan to provide student debt relief for hardworking borrowers recovering from a once-in-a-generation pandemic. They make it sound as if their program's not going to change at all. Of course, we're waiting on the Supreme Court to decide on this. Okay, but, but don't confuse the two. What the president did, he went unconstitutionally and said he was going to waive certain people part of their debt for student loan. But then he paused everybody's student loan. So everybody who borrowed a student loan within 60 days of the signing is going to have to pay that okay. back. So you're both the getting Supreme, something on that The point. Supreme Court is taking up that case. But if the Supreme Court came back and said that was unconstitutional, the president could still say he's pausing, mm -hmm. not waiving it. Mm -hmm. But now that this is in law, the Supreme Court decision will have to be upheld that they would have to pay. So the pause is gone. 
The pause has gone okay. within 60 days of this being signed. Okay, so, so that is another victory because that brings in $5 billion each month to the American public. Yeah, so there you go. Speaker Kevin McCarthy actually outlines a lot of the things in there. The student loan payment pause will end. Uh, what they say, what do you say, $5 billion of payments will start coming in per month. This is coming right out of Americans' pockets here. I think it's over 40 million Americans uh, will have to start paying that back. Remember, that actually started underneath former President Donald Trump. Um, yeah, and the average payment uh, for Americans is about $5,000 a year. Um, we'll have to see what the Supreme Court says about the student loan forgiveness. I believe that is still up to the Supreme Court. It's really still up for debate whether this is going to pass or not because Republicans seem to hate it and Democrats seem to hate it, at least some of them. So let me know your thoughts here in the comments. I'll keep you up to date here. We'll see. Let me know your thoughts here in the comments. If you haven't yet, make sure to click the subscribe button down below and the bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos. I'll have a few less videos here during the weekend, as you can see here. And uh, so make sure you have the bell icon on and uh, you'll see here. We'll be on our normal scheduled times, but I think I'll just have a few less videos here. 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. is our scheduled times here just for the weekend. Like I said, a few less videos here. So thanks for liking and sharing these videos here. Here's some videos you should watch next. Click this video here to see the new secret audio tape with former President Donald Trump and the new information about the Fed raising interest rates. Or this video here to see the potential $1,518 raise for Social Security. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.